Hey everybody, really quick before I get into this uh, Department of Homeland Security um, document review here that I'm going to go over with you, uh, a few things. Uh, one is, is if I make a mistake here because I'm really coffeeed out right now and I'm really spinning my wheels, I do not script my material. So if I make a mistake somewhere, don't think that I'm incompetent to be able to put this material out. I happen to be uh, quite intelligent and I know where every state is. I know where Iowa is. I know the capital of almost every state that's on the map. Um, it just sometimes when I get coffeeed out and I'm rushing and my mind is spinning, I tend to make a mistake. But it doesn't make me incompetent. Just wanted to put that out there. So now uh, a few things here. Yesterday I know I said I was going to put this information out, but my computer had an overheating problem. It's been having an overheating problem, and yesterday it overheated again and shut down. It would not turn back on. I had to get my backup computer out, get that going with programs and everything. I went to plug this back in later on in the evening. It came back on, so now I got external fans pointing on it uh, until I get the uh, the fan situation fixed there. Here are the documents right here. They are sitting here right next to me, and this is actually um, this right here. As you can see right here, somebody in a comment told me that these documents are already online for you. So I said, okay, great. Uh, what I did was, is for ease of uh, showing you, I put it in my Google Pocket. Every researcher should have Google Pocket. Uh, one, because you can uh, bookmark all your pages and it comes out just like this and you can be able to read it and everybody can see it. Here are the documents. Now, they're not as earth-shattering as maybe I made it out sound out to be because I had just got them in the mail and the clandestine way of they were sent to me uh, made me think that, oh, geez, man, maybe these are something. And, eh, well, not so much. But do not fret because I am getting ready to show you some very interesting information that came about from receiving these documents. So just to show you really quickly the do documents, uh, overview of... Uh, resiliency preparation between DHS or actually I should say the public sector and the private sector public sector being DHS FEMA military blah 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 so on and so forth right all of those uh, wh whatever department of this or whatever those are all public sectors now private sector is they don't mention them mention them by name really for this uh, uh, regional overview of critical infrastructure programs or do they mention who these corporations or of the private sector are getting ready to show you and I bet you think that Walmart CVS and Home Depot are the only ones I'm getting ready to show you that oh man that's that's not even near it but so in here you see a scope a regional overview uh, primary inputs package dynamic outputs council blah 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 uh, they talk about virtual roundtables each region will include three distinct virtual roundtables um, so just wanted to show you it's not as it's not as uh, valuable as I was thinking that this was going to be but hey it did help believe that and I want to thank that person if he would have never showed me this I may have never known about it so now let's get into the great stuff for everybody who thinks that the uh, Jan Janet Napolitano video coming out DHS stating that they were teaming up with Walmart uh, excuse me Walmart has been teamed up with DHS for a very long time, uh, dating back probably, uh, who knows. But what she was talking about there is that Walmart had teamed up to disseminate information, the See Something, Say Something program. And uh, because Walmart has these screens, you know, in their stores, and of course it will broadcast their See Something, Say Something message of DHS to the public very interesting not the whole public uses Walmart right uh, do you ever notice that the upper upper class don't use Walmart you know they'll go like whatever uh, Nordstrom's all that other weird stuff right so it's kind of mm, kind of making me weird you know suspicious about the the demographics that they're uh, that, that they're projecting the information to but anyway uh, so let us get into the really really good stuff here now Remember, I just showed you about the round tables and all that, right? So, Dabu7 puts out a video a couple days ago about some documents uh, relating to uh, Walmart and DHS. And these are all dating back from to early 2000s here, right? Going back, uh, see, 2006, uh, probably even much more before that. But interestingly enough, let's take a look at those documents because I need to. I'm getting ready to show you some of the things that uh, are mentioned in here. Okay. 
So these uh, key participants benchmark partners. These are the benchmarking partners. Watch this, public sector. U.S. Army Material Command, U.S. Transportation Command, Northern Command, uh, Joint Staffs. Uh, then you have DHS Interoperability Division, FEMA, American Red Cross. Now, private sector, and now they only mention right here, Walmart. Uh, Walmart, 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 right? But let's get down here. And as you can see, these uh, the, the main benchmark partners are CVS, Home Depot, and Walmart. And I'm going to show you that they're not mentioned on the other documents I'm about ready to show you. But I'm going about ready to show you a plethora of other private sector corporations that work in tandem or hand in hand with DHS that you had no, probably didn't even have a clue about. So let's get into that right here. Uh, national response plans. Walmart EOCs. EOC. Anybody know what an EOC is? Emergency Operations Center. Um, just to give you a brief rundown, you don't, haven't seen my Sandy Hook videos. Uh, chief Homestead, the police, the fire chief out of uh, Sandy Hook, or Newtown, I should say, the whole Newtown. Uh, he created the EOC, Emergency Operations Center. Uh, and I, I made comments in my video that I do believe that Chief Homestead, uh, uh, Chief Kehoe, and all them, you didn't actually see them or hear that from them during the whole event. And I do believe is because this was a drill and they were stationed at the Newtown EOC. And that's where they were, uh, you know, doing their operations for the drill. That's what EOC is all about. When something goes down, that's where all the emergency services head to, um, to to coordinate between their efforts and uh, everything for uh, uh, any kind of emergency, catastrophe, uh, hurricane, blah, blah, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Let's say even a attack on the United States. Um, are some of these Walmarts that close down in the vicinity of the, or in the perimeter of the Jade Helm uh, 15, Operation Jade Helm 15 exercise, uh, watch. You have two in Texas, uh, one in Florida, one in Tulsa, Oklahoma, one in California. Now, Texas being the main show right there where that's mentioned in the documents of uh, Operation Genome 15, it makes perfect sense, right? Florida is also mentioned as being one of the participants, but in a different kind of way. Are these Walmarts that close down are going to be involved in, is it part of the exercise or is it because something is going to go live and they needed these Walmarts for whatever to participate in whatever's going to go down for like let's say EOCs. Now the question I have is does Walmart have a, a, a distinct and separate emergency operations center apart from their own Walmart stores? I don't know but it could very well be that uh, they toured one of tour of Walmart's emergency operations center. So Walmart being in the private sector has their very own emergency operations center. Very interesting, right? So as I already showed you, Walmart, CVS, Home Depot. Look at the titles here. These are not titles that are given by corporate private sector um, uh, corporate heads. Senior Vice President, Supply Chain and Logistics. International Supply Chain, look at here. Director of Emergency Management Global Security, Walmart. These are all titles that were given to these private sector heads by DHS and, and, the, and the public sector. So you could see exactly what, how they are going to be participating in whatever is going to be coming up, whether real, uh, whether it's just an exercise, wh whatever the case may be. And as you can see, uh, one of the other Re American Red Cross, right? So now take a look at something else that you guys need to be on your radar. Public sector executives will meet ahead of the overall participants for lunch and walk through at one of the Walmart distribution centers. Now, that could mean um, that Walmart's, you know, where they get their supplies from to uh, to distribute their, their goods to each Walmart. And that could be one of those distribution centers. And I do think that that's most likely the case. So should Walmart distribution centers all around the United States if there's more than one? Of course there are. It says centers, plural. So should they be on your radar as well? And I'm thinking quite possibly they should be. So I'm going to have to find locations and broadcast that later on of where these distribution centers are in fact located. So let us move along here. So as you can see here, I just wanted to show you 
Uh, some of this stuff came about after Hurricane Katrina. Uh, interestingly enough, I do believe that Katrina, Sandy, and most of these other uh, damaging uh, hurricanes were uh, man-created uh, to do a specific task. And uh, a lot of this stuff has come about governmental-wise, uh, like what you're seeing here, with some of these hurricane events. Very interesting, right? So now I'm getting ready to show you here uh, some of the other documents that Dabu uh, uh, presented here, just giving him credit for the material that he presented. Uh, disaster relief, this is from Walmart, how the Emergency Operations Center has been instr instrumental in leveraging our resources and expertise to respond to communities impacted by natural disasters in a timely and organized manner. And is this one of their distribution centers right here? Could be. And is that possibly where their EOC is? I don't know. Is the Walmarts that closed down going to be um, actually used as em emergency, emergency EOCs? Uh, very quite possible. Don't know. Or because of the, the titles that you saw right here, logistics, supply chains, all that other stuff, right? Supply chain, logistics, supply chain. Now, these could be hubs for supply for military supplies going out to different locations nationally or in, because Operation Jade Helm 15 is centered around the uh, basically the lower half of the United States from go, leading from Florida all the way across to California and it could be for supply chains for that very purpose don't know yet so so you see that they do have uh, their, their emergency operation center natural disasters blah blah yada yada okay here also you see Walmart is well known for its uh, uh, responsiveness in immediate aftermath of a natural disaster. Uh, I'll leave all of these right here in case you haven't seen uh, the original documents up uh, or, or these uh, websites presented by Dabu. Now, hopefully I have enough time here. Okay, uh, I showed you these documents right here, right? Okay, that's the documents I, I received in the mail. Researchers out there, if you haven't heard of Google Pocket, I had, I would uh, suggest getting that. It's a pretty handy tool to uh, quickly put your web pages in, and you can easily just pop them up here. So, as you can see, the benchmarking partners uh, facilitates best practices, uh, social media, uh, all, all of these it has to do with, uh, let me see, sorry, that last document I already showed you, um, that was the... Uh, that was the Dabu 7 of the Walmart EOC. Okay, so now uh, from those documents that were sent to me in the mail, this is what I came up with. The council charters, all of that. Who is the participants? The tribal, uh, state, local, all that stuff. Uh, interesting, I found all of the documents from Homeland Security that show me who participates in these critical infrastructure programs. And here are the council charter memberships. Okay, as you can see, uh, Homeland Security, Department of Justice, all that. This is for the commercial facilities. Uh, don't forget, everybody, remember, Obama signed a executive order to take over everything. Agriculture, transportation, all that, right? So is that going to play out in all of this right here is what you're seeing. So the private sector coordinating council, American Hotels, uh, all, look at all the names. I'm not going to show you what Mall of America, Marriott International. Look at that. National Football League. What are they doing here? Right. Commercial facilities. Provide facilities for what purpose? FEMA camps, possibly? Look at some of these. Viacom, SeaWorld, NBC Universal, National Football League, Marriott International, Mall of America. I already showed you all that. Here is who is going to be controlling the communications uh, uh, infrastructure wise. Um, in the communication sector. Again, we already know who the membership is for the government or the public sector. All of these, even the Federal Reserve Board of Governors. Okay, so now look at these. AT&T, CenturyLink, uh, Cox, uh, Motorola, Sprint, Time Warner Cable, U.S. Telecom, and you know that there's some that are not on here. So you know that uh, this is not all about, you know, uh, uh, we have all of the whole industry in our pocket. As you can see, these are the ones that do work in tandem, hand-in-hand hand with DHS. So 
take a look at that. I will leave all of these links for you. Here is the interesting stuff. Okay. Whoops. No, not that. Let me stop this. Critical manufacturing sector. Now, if a major situation were to go on and conditions became critical, is that what they mean? That these would be uh, like, uh, let me explain to you, like in, in prison, right? If there is a uh, emergency that happens, like let's say there was a riot or whatever, and the next day, uh, like uh, prison jobs that they need to keep open, let's say, uh, you know, for food, pre preparing food, they call them critical workers. Okay, that's when a situation becomes critical, um, they will have workers. And that's what leads me to believe, if if I use that as an example, that that's what this is about. When a condition becomes critical, these are the manufacturing sectors that uh, will be uh, that will be utilized, per se. Uh, Bridgestone, um, Aerojet, Caterpillar, Chrysler, Cisco Systems, uh, John Deere and Company, uh, Delphi, Emerson Electric, uh, let's see, Ford Motor Company, General Electric. Ah, very interesting. General Electric played a huge part in the Sandy Hooks hoaxathon. Um, Harley Davidson. Ah, you suckers. I ain't messing with you guys anymore. Uh, Intel. Look at all these here. United States Steel, Whirlpool. Um, this is just to name a few. Penske, all, all this. I'm going Raytheon. Remember, Raytheon just got a huge contract to redo the uh, what is that mountain NORAD mountain over there in uh, Colorado whatever the whatever state it was okay so now you see that critical manufacturing sector defense industrial base sector and here is your governing body uh, or from the public sector all of this and here are your sector coordination council now, does that mean that this is just the council and there could be other agencies? It could be. Uh, but BAE Systems, Booz Allen Hamilton. Hello, everybody. We've been talking about that here in videos uh, in the past couple months. Boeing, General Dynamics, General Electric again, uh, HP uh, White, uh, let's see, Northrop Grumman, and Rolls-Royce North America, huh? Okay, let's take a look at some of the other interesting stuff. Information technology sector. Here are the membership here. Um, Adobe. Uh, Cisco again. Uh, let me see. Dynetics. eBay. Hmm. <laughs> here, here you go. Google. Yes. Hewlett Packard. IBM. Microsoft, it, was it McAfee? It, McAfee, is that that freaking virus company? I don't know. Uh, uh, Oracle, uh, just uh, Siemens. All, uh, take a look at all this. I'm not going to read them all off to you. Verizon, uh, Xerox, all that. But uh, I want now I'm not even going to show you the rest. I'm going to leave them in the description box for you. I'm going to only show you one more. And I'm going to explain something to you here. Let's take a look. You guys remember my uh, interview with uh, uh, about operation... Oper no, excuse me. Operation Choke Point. This is the Florida pawn shop and gun owner, or pawn shop and gun store owner in Florida. Remember how he got a, claimed he got a letter that told him that they were not, no longer allowed uh, to bank with SunTrust. So SunTrust cut him off. He said in the interview, well, I went to Bank of America and they told, also told me to, uh, you know, sit and spin. So he went somewhere else, right? So you can see that in the interview. I'll leave the link right here, and you can uh, check that out. That he did mention that's who he was banking with, SunTrust, right? So let's take a look. Here is the financial services sector, right? Federal Reserve Bank of New York, Chicago, all of this good stuff, right? Uh, look at this sector coordinating council. Watch. I'm going to go right down to the bottom. Her Bank of America, that's one. Sun Trust Bank. There's the other. Look at all the other banks. Wells Fargo, Visa, uh, Royal Bank of Scotland, PNC, uh, Navy Federal Credit Union. Phew, you sons of bitches. Morgan Stanley. I've always believed that Morgan Stanley played a huge part in the Sandy Hook hoax. Oh, mainly because of uh, Nancy Lanza, the name that they used 
and the the email that they used for her actually came back to a real Nancy Lanza who happens to still be alive living in Connecticut who worked at Morgan Stanley Smith Barney yes so uh, MasterCard JP Morgan John Hancock all of these are in the finance so what exactly how exactly do they uh, work with DHS in some of these instances I don't exactly have the answers to all that but what I'll tell you is is that these are very interesting um, associations from some of the stuff that we've seen operation choke point is it because the government is having their partners in crime which is that's what I'm gonna call them that's a criminal act to me and these partners in crime are working with the government DHS FEMA all that to cut off guns ammo everything else not just the coins pawn shops all that what's listed in the operation choke point uh, directives so there you have it I'm going to leave you links for all of this that you see and sorry the video took so long but uh, hey maybe some of this right here that I'm not being able to put together for you uh, will uh, actually jog something in your mind and share it with me and that way we can put out some more material about what it is that we're seeing here thanks everybody